Dan, everything seems to hang around the dollar. Getting the dollar right, getting the call right, is absolutely critical to your investment thesis right now. Indeed. How do I make that happen? Well, I think we want to look at primarily, I think it is the Fed that's the marginal influence on the dollar. The ECB seems yep. straightforward. We know what they're going to do. They're printing money that should weaken the euro to some degree. I think the big change recently is kind of how far the Fed stepped back after the, this last meeting, how far the dots came down in terms of the projection for interest rates, how comfortable they are with higher inflation. So all that argues for a weaker dollar, certainly weaker than people expected. I think that's likely to persist for a while, and we can work through then what the consequences of that are for other asset classes. I think we will get back to the stronger dollar mode, but I think it's further into this year than we expected. So Goldman Sachs is wrong? Uh, it's always a question of timing, right? You're going to be right at some point <laughs> in the horizon. I think short term, probably more weaker than stronger. OK. Give me the highest beat of trade on a weaker dollar. Well, oil seems to be the highest correlation right now. So oil is probably one where I think we're going to see a lot of correlations or high correlations between the two. Uh, then that's feeding through, of course, into equities. U.S. will benefit or should benefit from this more than eurozone equities. So it's another place where you might want to look to take yep. advantage of it in the short term. We've seen a trade over the last few days that certainly seems to be long oil, short banks. Is that like, give me some long shorts within the equity story as well. Who is going to benefit from this? Who is ne not necessarily going to see any pickup in, in, and the benefits coming through? from this. It's not that then the, the, the kind of the latter is necessarily impaired by anything, it's just mm -hmm. it's not going to get the bounce. Right. Well, I think, you know, supposedly now if we do have the weaker dollar, all the concerns that we had previously about the exporters, multinationals in particular, a bit, some of that also should reverse, so hopefully that's beneficial. Uh, I think domestically it's probably going to be less clear the impact, I think only perhaps on what you see mm. in terms of the, the price of petrol for people in the U.S., but otherwise I think it's probably less clear from the sector basis and I think uh, probably more evident at the high level vis-a-vis, -vis, say, Europe. If you look at the ETF flow data over the last few weeks, money's been taken out of European ETFs. At the beginning of the year, it was the trade. Everybody and their dog was long European equities. Not so much anymore. Why not? Well, I think that's also explains why the reversal that we did see in January and February perhaps was so severe. The fact that at the beginning it was such a consensus trade and when you have so much positioning yep. you get a little bit of info that turns wrong. I think perhaps one thing that's a little bit healthier about the market right now is that you probably have more divergence in the views than we had at the beginning of the year. I think you can have a story that's more positive for U.S. equities versus Eurozone or more positive for fixed income versus equities right now. Uh, I think what we're looking at is with a weaker dollar, uh, better for U.S. equities. I think the longer term story for Eurozone is still there. Better profit growth potential than you have in the U.S., but it's just, again, a question of when that's actually going to be realized. Great stuff, Dan. Thank you very much indeed.